Workhorse Champion, the cover star of WWE 2K that year, and his merch was selling like hotcakes, so his stock was real high. My John Cena video is at 48k right now, and we're at 400 subs. I was not expecting for that video to go crazy, but thanks to those who've been showing love and subscribing. Now let's get into the video. Going into the new year, Seth Rollins wins the 2019 Men's Royal Rumble by curse up and Braun Strowman on the ring apron to eliminate him. The following Monday Night Raw, Seth celebrates his Rumble win with the crowd. Triple H comes out to congratulate him on his win, telling Seth he needs to know who he will be facing at WrestleMania 35. The WWE Champion Daniel Bryan or the Universal Champion Brock Lesnar. Dean interrupted Seth and Triple H telling Seth he always believed in him and by his side while Triple H tried to stop them from taking over WWE. Triple H told him you're going to go down the brother route, talk about the brother that you stabbed in the back the same night your other brother announced he was fine leukemia again, that's where you're going with this? Ah, I see why Dean dipped out the WWE, they were tweaking with this angle. The messed up part about it, the heel run went nowhere. They had Dean wearing a Bane mask, getting pressed by Nia Jax, and getting ass injections on TV. Later that night, Brock Lesnar and Paul Heyman are in the ring. Paul Heyman glazing up Brock Lesnar, saying Seth Rollins a hoe. He ain't gonna challenge Brock for the universal title. Then Seth comes out and stand on business and get in Brock's face. He got Brock just laughing. Seth steals off on him, kick Brock in the stomach, then tries to go for a curve stomp, but Lesnar catches him and hits an F5. Seth wouldn't just play dead, so Brock ended up f 5 him five more times. The build up to the match was good. This view showed great character development Seth Rollins went through the past four years because the last time him and Brock feuded back in 2015, he was shaking his boots when Triple H announced Brock as his next opponent to challenge him for the WWE Championship at Battleground. Their match at WrestleMania was the opener and a good way to start the show. They got straight to the point with Seth defeating Brock Lesnar in under 10 minutes to capture the Universal Championship. The Raw after Mania, Seth tells the crowd he heard Brock Lesnar and Paul Heyman were taking a flight to Vegas for some meetings. As far as he is concerned, they could stay in Las Vegas. Cause Brock Lesnar is no longer the reigning, defending, undisputed, universal heavyweight champion. I am. And I would do you one better. I am the reigning, defending, fighting, undisputed, universal heavyweight champion. The New Day came out to celebrate Kofi Kingston winning the WWE Championship against Daniel Bryan at WrestleMania. WWE playing a winner take all between Seth and Kofi that night just for the match to end the disqualification when the bar got involved. To determine Seth Rollins next opponent for Money in the Bank, six superstars competed in a number one contenders match. AJ Styles would be the one to win and go on to challenge Seth Rollins for the Universal title. A first time ever in WWE between two in-ring ghosts of this generation. The video package WWE did between them covering their wrestling careers was tough. Seth successfully retained the Universal title in his match against AJ Styles. The reversal of the curb stomp into the Styles Clash during the match was smooth. Later that night, the main event was the Money in the Bank ladder match and the participants were Ricochet, Braun Strowman, Drew McIntyre, Baron Corbin, Randy Orton, Andrade, Finn Balor, and Mustafa Ali. Mustafa Ali is on top of the ladder and Brock music plays, then he turns into a straight bot and starts selling. Instead of pulling the briefcase down, he just watches Brock run down to the ring and gets knocked off the ladder by him. Then Brock climbs up and grabs the briefcase to win money in the bank. Brock wasn't even advertised on the card. He came and deboed the briefcase. Rock celebrates winning the Money in the Bank briefcase with Paul Heyman on Raw. Seth comes out and tells him to cash in right now. Paul reads Seth the rules for the Money in the Bank contract and Brock learns he has a whole year to cash in before it expires and slaps Paul Heyman upside the head. He tells Seth, I got a whole year to cash in. Screw you, nigga. I'm going home. Brock was able to play mind games with Seth and even Kofi. Kofi ends up calling out Brock talking about he wants him to come out here and cash in on him. He beats you five months later in six seconds and lets you get all the Gatorade boost before the match. Seth comes out waiting for Brock to come out as well. Brock was tweaking with the Money in the Bank briefcase. He came out with it looking like a boombox. He was playing bad tunes out of it. He got inside the ring and started hitting the gritty. Brock was more focused on getting the Universal title back from Seth. Seth had other things to worry about. Him and Baron Corbin started feuding with each other and this is where everything started to go downhill. Baron Corbin retired Kurt Angle at WrestleMania that year, but he was still a bum. He didn't come up as a legitimate threat to take the Universal title off of Seth. His corporate look gimmick just wasn't credible. The feud wasn't good. Going from a feud from AJ Styles to Baron Corbin was just a huge downgrade and it didn't help Seth's Universal title reign. Around this time, Seth's Twitter rants was getting him in trouble. WWE wanted him to be a role model to the kids, and I guess all of a sudden, Seth decided, Fuck them kids. He was calling AEW trash and saying WWE's the best wrestling promotion in the world, telling niggas to go band for band with him. 
Also telling CM Punk to run the fade. Fans started to not rock with Seth because of this. It got so bad when they put Seth Rollins and Becky Lynch real life relationship on screen trying to make them this power couple. Y'all were not edging leaders though. They had Seth rocking a t-shirt saying the man's man on it like it was drip. They were making my dog look corny. Seth and Becky Lynch teamed up to face Baron Corbin and Lacey Evans at Extreme Rules. And both their championships were on the line. The best part during this match was when Baron Corbin hit the end of days on Becky. She calls herself the man. I don't see nothing wrong with it. Seth looked across from the corner and he just blacks out, beating the hell out of Baron Corbin with a kendo stick, steel chair, and then delivering three curve stomps to get the victory for him and Becky. Brock Lesnar makes his way out to the ring after the match, delivering a German suplex to Seth, cashing in his briefcase to then hit a F5 on Seth to capture the Universal title again. Seth earned his shot back at the Universal title, winning an All-Star Battle Royal to go on to win the title at SummerSlam. During his second Universal title reign, him and Braun Strowman would capture the Raw Tag Team titles, now making him a double champion. The reign between him and Braun Strowman wouldn't last that long, where they lost the tag titles to Ziggler and Bobby Roode at Clash of Champions. That same night, Seth and Braun had a match for the Universal title, where Seth was able to successfully retain it. Him and Bray Wyatt started their feud when Bray was trying to choke him to death. Bray Wyatt had revented himself as The Fiend, a fresh new character that was over that year, so this is where WWE booked themselves into a corner. Seth was still in the process of trying to get his momentum back, so he couldn't lose. Seth Rollins vs The Fiend would be set to take place at Hell in a Cell, inside Hell in a Cell. The Fiend in this match was booked super OP. Every time Seth gave him a curb stomp, he got back up instantly. It made Seth crash out. He hit The Fiend with a sledgehammer and the rev calls for a disqualification. The crowd started booing. Channing, they wanted a refund in AEW. I don't blame them. Seth said on the Stone Cold's Broken Skull sessions, he was ready to strangle Vince McMahon as he made his way back through the curtain. He should have strangled him. Not like it would have been the first time. From this point on, the reaction Seth was getting got worse. He dropped the title to The Fiend in the rematch at Crown Jewel. I remember watching Survivor Series that year when it was Raw vs SmackDown vs NXT. Anytime Seth was tagged in to enter the match, the crowd got to booing him. The following Monday Night Raw, he tried giving a lecture to the Raw roster after their loss at Survivor Series, but nobody was trying to hear it. Kevin Owens comes out and gives him a stunner. This led to Seth turning heel when he attacked Kevin Owens backstage and lined himself with Buddy Murphy and the author of pain to become the Messiah towards the end of 2019. Seth was number one on the Pro Wrestling Illustrated 500 list that year. Wasn't really a surprise. He's the modern day Mr. WrestleMania. WWE in 2019 wasn't that good. The talent was not being utilized correctly. Besides Seth's Twitter rants, it was on WWE for the bad run he had that year. At least he made up for it when he won the World Heavyweight Championship back in 2023 at Night of Champions and holding the title all the way up to WrestleMania 40, where he was the MVP of the entire PLE. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video. Hit the like and the subscribe button on the way out. Peace.